Hey guys, today I'm gonna share my full review of the Trezor Model T hardware wallet. I'm gonna share my experience as a longtime user. I'm gonna share the pros and cons and also how it compares to similar products. Just FYI, this is not sponsored at all, but I am gonna be doing a giveaway of three free Trezors. So if you're interested in that, then definitely watch until the end of this video. Otherwise, if you do end up buying one yourself, then please use my affiliate link down below because that would help me out immensely. Okay, so let's just start at the top, right? With what are we even talking about here? Well, a hardware wallet is a physical device that stores and manages the private keys that control your crypto, and it's done in an offline manner. That's actually a super important distinction because the opposite is software wallets and those are connected to the internet. So those can more easily be hacked and your private keys and therefore crypto would be stolen. But for hardware wallets, the keys don't leave your device and it's kept offline. So it's much harder to infiltrate. These are an absolute must if you have over a thousand dollars worth of crypto and you wanna keep that secure. And in terms of options, there's a lot of options out there, but Trezor is one of the biggest brands there. Are they absolutely perfect? No, but honestly, which brand is these days? So just all things considered, I trust Trezor's 10 year track record, which is why I've been using their product for years now. But anyways, let's dive a little more into the details, like what features does it have? What all can you do with it? Well, there's really not much to it, right? You have one of these devices and you have an app on your computer called the Trezor Suite. The device lets you generate wallet addresses for various coins, and then you can send, receive, and store those coins there. When you do any sort of transactions with your wallets, the device pops up some prompts on the screen and you have to click it in order to confirm those. Now, in terms of the Trezor Suite, there's both a desktop app and a web version. I usually just stick with a desktop app because I consider that more secure, but it's really quite intuitive. You can see your entire portfolio. You can upgrade your device's firmware. You can create something called hidden wallets. You can even buy, sell, and swap crypto directly within the app and just so much more. I actually do use the Trezor Suite occasionally, but a more common way to use the hardware wallet is to connect it to MetaMask, which will kind of serve as the front end per se, and then you can interact with popular dApps like Uniswap. You'd basically just use MetaMask as you normally would, but when you actually go and send a transaction, you'll need to approve it on the Trezor device by clicking it, remember, to get it executed. So that's kind of what makes it more secure in a way. Now, in terms of setting it up, it's quite easy. It only takes like five minutes. Just plug your device into your computer, download the Trezor Suite software, and then follow the step-by-step -step instructions that pop up on the screen. One part of that process is to write down your seed phrase backup, which is super important because that lets you recover your wallets if you ever lose your device. So take that quite seriously and think through where you wanna keep it. Also, another thing I highly recommend is to set up a pin so that in order to use the device in the future, you'll need to input a pin. This is way more secure because if someone ever grabs hold of your device, they still don't know the pin, right? So they can't access your funds. It's just an extra layer of protection. And speaking of security, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that for Trezors in a minute when I get to the comparison section. But first, some quick pros and cons. So in terms of the pros, this Trezor is super intuitive. The device, it's touchscreen, so there's no buttons at all around it, right? And also the Trezor Suite is super intuitive too. It's also super easy to connect with MetaMask so we can use the most popular dApps that we already use. But perhaps the biggest pro is that the entire product is open source even the hardware device itself, not only the firmware or software. So they really follow the ethos of crypto, right? Have you heard, don't trust, verify? Well, you can do that up and down the Trezor product suite. Now in terms of cons, one thing I will say is that I don't always know what I'm approving on the screen. Like when you send a transaction on Uniswap via MetaMask and it connects to Trezor, I have to press approve like three different times and it tells me some super technical terms on the screen that I don't always understand. I mean, that hasn't really caused me problems in the past, but it is confusing. 
But I will say though, that might be the case for most hardware wallets too. So I'm not sure this con is specific to the Trezor per se. And then another con is just that it has a bit higher price point than similar products from competitors. So if you're quite price sensitive, it may not be the right product for you. Now that is a perfect segue and it brings me to the comparison section. Let's compare the Ledger versus the Trezor. And those are the two biggest competitors in the hardware wallet space. I think I'm qualified to speak on this because I actually own both and I use them a little bit before deciding to go with the Trezor long-term. Why? Well, there's a couple reasons. First, I like the form factor of this Trezor more. It's just a good size, easy to hold in my hand, easy to use. But number two is that Trezor has a better security track record. Remember Ledger had that email leak where they leaked their whole like hundreds of thousands of people's emails in a database leak a while ago. And more recently they announced that they would do a Ledger recover feature that would make it possible for your private key to leave the device, which made people really mad because the whole purpose of a hardware wallet is offline storage, right? Meanwhile, the Trezor team said that seed phrase extraction will remain impossible for their devices and everyone can check and verify that statement because it's open source, right? So yeah, I sleep super soundly at night when using Trezor. And yes, I know there was that security firm that said a long time ago that they could extract keys from the Trezor devices, but I'm not worried about that because A, that requires someone actually taking your physical Trezor device, which is way harder than hacking a centralized database. And B, it requires incredibly technical skills to do that extraction procedure. So most like thieves cannot figure it out. Now I do want to point out that the Trezor is more expensive than the Ledger, at least the Model T compared to the Nano line. But I like Trezor more, so I personally think it's worth it. Anyways, overall I rate the Trezor a strong buy. And if the Model T is a bit too pricey for you, then the Model 1 is fine too. Either way, I think all crypto investors should have one of these, or at least once you cross $1,000 in portfolio value. Now if you want that giveaway, where I'm giving away three Trezor Model 1s for free, then just like this video, comment below with why you want one, and I'll do the drawing in a week. Just FYI, this video is not sponsored like I said, but the giveaway was done by courtesy of the Trezor team. Otherwise, if you do plan on buying one, please use my affiliate link down below as that would help me out immensely. Cheers.